Hey guys, Eric here. Today I'm going to play through chapter one, Into the Storm. I'm going to do it solo, and I'm just going to show you how to complete it by yourself. Now, uh, this is for DLC 3 of the Call of Duty World War II. It's called the uh, Tortured Path. This one's a little different in the fact that it's got three kind of mini-maps that you play through in order. You have to complete them by getting to round 10 and then escaping at the end of that round. There's a bunch of weird things about this, but I'll get into it when you do it, but a couple things. Every three rounds, you have to complete a special objective. Now, you think that you might get a bonus or something for completing this objective, but you don't. You have to complete them, otherwise you fail the mission. So, first thing I'm going to get is a quick revive. Because these maps are fairly small, and you don't have to uh, purchase to open any doors or anything, it kind of saves some trouble. Basically, you can just focus on getting weapons. Now, a funny thing too is that the wall buys, you can only get a pistol and SMG to start out with, and they're random. You don't, you can't get to select them. Oh, now here we go. This is how you unlock the Pack-a-Punch. There's three batteries around the map. Each one starts out unlocked, and then there's, as the uh, rounds continue, you unlock more. So you have one there. That one's always the first one if you're playing solo. And then there's two others. There's one over here. Yep, there it is. It just passed by it. And I believe there's one over here. Okay, so I'm just going to run around in circles to keep the zombies kind of all congregated in one place. Uh, and you know the pistol I'm using? The 9mm sap. This one's really good. Just start out with it when you're going into this map. And then when you get the Pack-a-Punch, then just upgrade that because it has like super strong penetration. It's very strong. There we go. You need to kill about 15 or so zombies to be able to get that charged up. Now you have to wait till round 3 for the next one to appear. And then the next one appears in round 6. But then both of those are special objectives so you probably aren't going to be able to do much with those. So wait till round 7 is when you should be able to access the Pack-a-Punch. And you're going to need it because at the round 10 is when you fight a boss. And he can be pretty tough. Now, the actual objectives, what you're supposed to do for the uh, objective rounds is random. Some of them are pretty easy, some of them are a huge pain, so it's kind of a little bit up in the air how well you're going to do in this, depending on what objectives you get. The good thing about the objective rounds is that when you complete the objective, then it ends. It's like you don't have to play it anymore, the round immediately stops. And you are on a time limit with those. So if you want to, like, amass points, then you can, but if you're playing a solo, you'll have plenty of points. Here we go. This is the second one you want to get. Increase weapon damage. This is how I go. I get the, the revive. I get the increased weapon damage. It's a good time to get SMG as early as you can. That's 2,000. Let's see. Reload speed increase and the sprint speed increase are also really good. So, those are probably the best ones you want to get. The other ones aren't terrible, but they're kind of situational, so I prefer just to get the ones where you increase your weapon damage and all that. Let's kill these guys. And we're in round two now. We already got the battery charged, so we don't need to worry about that. As you can see, the enemies come pretty hard and fast already. Because there's only ten rounds, they don't really waste any time. They just go ahead and throw them all at you. Yeah, see, there's the wall buys, and see how they're blue? They're random. An interesting thing, too, and I didn't know this at first, is that if you buy multiple items from the same wall buy, then it increases your chances. I'm not sure if it increases your chances, but you have a chance of getting a jack-in-the-box. And if you're playing by yourself, the jack-in-the-box is insanely useful. You'll see it come into effect later on, but there's some parts where you have to deal with large groups of enemies coming at you, either with, like, a... a defense objective. Sometimes you have to keep something from being destroyed. Or at the end, when you have to do an escape, you have to stand in a certain spot for a long period of time. And there's tons of zombies swarming at you. When you're by yourself, that jack-in-the-box is a lifesaver. It's kind of random, but by the time that you really need it, which is in the final rounds, past round 7. Here we go. Faster reload speed. That one's good. The door is related to the easter egg. There's number two. That's the... Yeah, I can't quite afford it yet. That's the second battery down there. Once we complete round three, then we'll be able to charge that one up. 
Alright, this one's special zombies. This one's not too hard. There we go. Just as long as we get to a good spot. Those electric zombies are bad. Now, you know when you play solo, you start out with armor. When you complete an objective, you get a special drop. If you complete one of these objective maps, sections, then you get a drop and it will replenish your armor because there's no uh, pack-a-punch, there's no special machines that you can use a perk upgrade machine that you can use that will increase your armor. The only time you get it is when you get these bat ordnance inbound. Also, after this, yeah, you get assault rifles and shotguns. And those wall buys appear at this point. The last sequence, you get light machine guns. Uh, pass around seven, I mean. You get light machine guns and you get sniper rifles, which... I don't know why they save sniper rifles for last. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Alright, close range weapon's good. <laughs> and end field number two, yeah, it's useless, thanks. Now we're in wave four. Let's see if we can charge the second battery. And we grab one of these. The ITRA burst. I have no idea what that is. I appreciate him for coming up with some new World War II guns. And these are actual guns that make sense. I'm gonna throw some shade at World War I Battlefield right now. Because they put in some ridiculous experimental machine guns in that game. That, like, literally only two were ever made. At least, like, with World War II, there actually were a lot of obscure machine guns that people actually used. I think this game has more single-shot assault rifles than that game. Single-shot rifles than that game does. It's ridiculous. Alright, shade throwing over. Let's charge up this battery. This one's pretty easy. Alright, battery charged. Yeah, once we have a good gun and it's powered up, then just a walk in the park. There we go. Now I'll just get the stamina upgrade and we'll be set. There it is. That's stamina. No one can catch me now. As you can see, this map, it, it makes it pretty possible to play by yourself. Because see how much space you have? You've got these one areas like this where you've got two directions you can go. You've got some pretty nice wide areas you can move around in. Remember when you play solo too, just go ahead and upgrade all your weapons. Just fully upgrade them because you have all the upgrades available right from the start. So just get all the attachments you want on them right from the get-go. Because you don't have to upgrade, you don't have to get any points to do it. Now, you don't have progression like you would online. So in some ways it can be a little trickier, but... In other ways it's, uh, it's a little more forgiving. So, it's up to you how you want to do it. There we go. As you can see, I've got tons of points, so I don't really need to worry about that. There's a big guy. Oh, another good thing to have. I have uh, Shell Shock as my special ability. I think this one's really useful for playing solo. There's another one where you can turn invisible, but I kind of like this one a little bit more. Because then it can kind of knock enemies over and you don't have to deal with them. Invisibility is more useful for getting away or just like using the uh, completing objectives. Now there are objectives you have to do in this. There's like one that's... Ah, uh, here we go, STG. There's one where you have to repair some radios around the environment. That's one of the objectives you have to do. You're like, yep, there it is right here. But this one's not hard, especially in this map. You just have to move fast. Just start repairing them before the enemies appear, and you'll be alright. If they really start hoarding you, then just use Shell Shock. Alright. Get rid of the skinny zombies, the fast running skinny zombies. Hoard all the regular ones together. 
to make your life a lot easier because they just keep coming in this until time runs out they just keep coming it's not a regular uh round but there we go probably wouldn't be a bad idea to use shell shock a little more often because i've got charged up and really not doing anything with it at the moment yeah, run to a new area. Just use it. While they're taking the time to start appearing. And you can just get out of here. Let's get the last one. Perfect. As you can see, I'm down two armors, but... We'll replenish it right here. I get light machine guns and sniper rifles, which... Uh, yeah, thanks for sniper rifles. These things are useless. I get some money, get some ammo. Mm. Yeah, it's got a Flugelfaust. A Flugerfaust, I mean. That thing is, uh, you just don't have enough ammo for it, for it to be effective. All right, we're in wave seven, so let's get the last one charged up. That's it, right there. So, this should be pretty easy. Gun down some Zambies. Some Zambambos. Yeah, there we go. Now, I believe I do get a Jack in the Box in this. So I'll show that off pretty soon. But it's very useful. If anything, they're easier to get in these maps than they are in the regular maps. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to throw some shade at this game, too, because this is, seems kind of like a... I don't know, these seem a little basic compared to what we normally get for these maps. I mean, there's three of them, but... And I, you know what, I'm not going to knock them for trying new things, but it just feels a little... Just not too impressive. Uh-oh. And this Joker. As long as you know he's coming, he's not too bad. When he catches you going around corners is the problem. There you go. He's dead. We got lucky. We got an STG. Yeah, I'm just going another circuit around this area. There we are. So to reiterate, the three ones you want to get outside of the self-revive is weapon damage, reload speed, and sprint speed. Yep, there we go. Unlock the Uber Spriggan. It's just that simple. It's the same on every map. They all work the same way. There's a battery around you have to charge and just go and kill zombies. You do it three times as the map continues and then it's over. So let's upgrade this. I'll show off the pistol. As people online really recommended this gun. No skeptical, but... I think it actually works really well. Give it a shot. A little low on STG ammo. That's another thing with these maps. Is that there's ammo boxes around. Oh, there we go. Let's upgrade this one too. And you can, up, you can uh, refill... There's, I think there's two of them in this map. There's two of them in most of the maps, I think. And you can refill your ammo. Ha! <laughs> I just took a picture. You can do it up to three times with each one of these ammo boxes. They're little green boxes. They're up on tables. There's one I just passed by. Alright, let's try out the 9mm. all right against single enemies but yeah there it is once we get them grouped up and then we can really try it out yeah look at that just keeps going it's really strong <laughs> it just mows through them this thing's awesome 
It's a great ghost custom. Alright, at this point, it's just surviving until we get to the last couple objectives. Now, it can be tough if you don't have a decent way of dealing with enemies. If you get a defense objective, then this can be really hard. It can be almost impossible by yourself. Sometimes you'll get an objective where they want you to defend a specific area. Usually like some kind of pile of boxes, something like that. That's got to go down easy now. M1A1 carbine? Mm, no. Yeah, it's right, like right there is where you have to defend it. And there's just swarms of enemies come and attack. Yeah, I'm going to try to get a jack-in-the-box. There we go. Yep, press L1. I got an M1 Garand, which is like, okay, that's all right. All right. This one is pretty easy if you have a strong weapon. This is one of the better ones you want to get for this. You have to kill VIZ. Very cute. Very important zombie. So you just have to kill this guy. Usually a weakling. It's a chump. You have to blow away. Kill him before he gets to the spot. Which is very short. I don't know why it has such a, such a long time limit. Because look, it's right there. Alright, that's it. He's dead. Let's try a different gun. Type 5? Okay. Alright, well let's restore our armor. Let's see what we got. I think you get a wonder weapon here. Yep, you do. I don't want to use it though. It just doesn't have enough ammo. If I had enough jolts to upgrade it, that might be pretty good. Okay. But here we go, we gotta fight a boss. Now, the trick here is that he's got a big shield. You know, what you need to do is lure him into these big red circles. That's allied bombing. So when he gets hit by an allied bomb, then he becomes exposed. Like his shield disappears, he's stunned for a little while. That's when you can shoot him. The hard part is you need to keep him in there. He's got a flamethrower, which is really annoying. If he just shot you, it would be a lot less annoying, but no, he's got flamethrower, so if you get close to him, then you just, like, get overwhelmed by the stupid flames. So hopefully we can get him to a spot where he'll be exposed, but when he gets hit by that, he's stunned for a long time. You can shoot his weak spot, which are the tanks on his back, the flamethrower tanks. Here we go. This is a good spot to kind of keep him busy. Man, that flamethrower is annoying. They kind of try to run around in the circles around the edge. There, he's exposed now. They revive pretty quick. The first time he revives fairly quickly. But if he gets hit with it again while his shield is down, then he'll be stunned for a while. Yep. Yeah, right here. Yeah, see, this gun does tons of damage to him. It's great. The main thing is, you, you just need to move quick. Because that time limit is omnipresent, and it can be a pain. But just remember, you can start out with this gun. So, it's a good idea just to get it fully upgraded and set. There we go. Got him. There we go. Just unload on him. This should do it. There, he's dead. There, we got engineered part. These are special. They, there are special upgrades for your different random weapons. Makes it a little easier if you complete these. Then you can attach them to one of your guns. It's kind of it's random which one you get the attachment for. But basically, it just makes your gun better. So now the wave 10 is complete. We have the final wave. In this one, you just have to get to the evac point. Basically, you have to survive for a certain amount of time. Then the evac point becomes available and you have to stand on it for a certain amount of time. This is where having a jack-in-the-box is really useful. Alright. Now, at this point, we don't need to get there. 
you don't need to stay in this spot. You have a lot of time to get here, so just if you feel you're like getting crowded, just run away. You can come back. Once the time limit runs out, then a second time limit will start. And that's when you have to stand in the circle until you get evac'd. Now let's try this out. This thing is insanely good. Okay, here's time limit two. Yeah, you have to be here when the time limit runs out. If you're not, then you're just going to die. You fail, and then it's mission over. So, I get a jack-in-the-box something to distract them. And there we go. It's over. That's chapter one, Into the Storm finished. Come back with chapter two pretty soon. Chapter two is a lot harder than chapter one. So, hopefully I can come up with some good tips on how to get through it solo. Otherwise, uh, you might need a team. <laughs> well, is a, just to run through it again, the objectives you want are quick revive, weapon damage second, the reload speed, sprint speed, get the sap, 9mm sap, bring that with you, get the SMG from the wall by, try to get a jack-in-the-box, and be sure to get that pack-a-punch. Otherwise... You'll be a, might have some problems. Oh, and get shell shock. That one too. Yeah, but otherwise, there it is. Just knowing ahead of time what happens probably will make things easier. That's it for me, and take it easy, guys.